the tale of Sweeney Todd. <laughs> the epic thriller is one of the most talked about Broadway shows along the Great White Way, most notably for its jaw-dropping musical performances and a set with surprises around every single corner. The deliciously dark tale follows the story of a man with a dark and mysterious past seeking revenge against those who ruined his life, all with the help of a lonely pie shop owner. And now the chair awaits as two new faces bring chaos to Fleet Street. Joining us this morning with a peek behind the curtain of Sweeney Todd, the demon barber of Fleet Street, are Nicholas Christopher and Gina Duvall. Welcome to New York Living. Hello, Hi. thanks for having us here. They Congrats, knew too. Yes. Oh, thank you. And we feel right at home in front of the red curtain. <laughs> oh, see, I knew it. It's yeah. so fitting, isn't it? It really is. It is. So you're both taking the stage. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, at Sweeney Tom, Miss Lovett. Yes, uh, that's what Nick right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, did your predecessors give you any advice, any coaching? Or were they just, just don't screw this up, have fun? Yeah, Good exactly. <laughs> well, you know, Josh Groban is known for being such a mean person behind the scenes. Yeah, you know. Um, no, we were, we've been texting a lot, especially after, mm -hmm. uh, he, after he left the show, and he gave me the advice that the other Sweeney Todd's gave him, which was, you know, Wash when you wash the blood off in the sink after the show, wash it all off in the sink and leave it there and, and go home. Metaphorically and physically. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, physically, too, you go on the subway and someone's like, that's the guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're in trouble, buddy. Exactly. Um, but what about you? I mean, it, just to be on this show, it's so, I mean, it has such a storied past. Mm -hmm. And to, to be on this show that so many people want to see. I know. It's it so is nice. really an incredible role to play. Like, I think we both feel like as soon as you step, onto the show at the start it sort of transports you and takes you and that's such a privilege to work on a piece like that it's not always the way and it sort of like gets richer and richer the more you do it and i think the advice that anna lee gave me was just to sort of pace yourself because mm -hmm. it is such a tiring exhausting role like lots of sleep lots of good food all that sort of stuff and you, you can tell she's from Brooklyn. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. True, best eye. You can also tell that you thoroughly enjoy this process because as you're speaking, your whole face is just lighting up. Oh, I'm glad. No, absolutely. I mean, this job is what dreams have been made of, like the mm -hmm. stability of how long we've run and also getting to watch Annalie Ashford and Josh Groban work. It's such a privilege to see those artists up close dive in and now to take over the roles for the next few weeks. Like this whole thing has been a dream and it's, it's a, a privilege and a pleasure. And forgive me, where, where did you grow up? So uh, I grew up in Germany and then England, and then I've been in New York for about 13, 14 years. So no matter where you live, performing mm. on Broadway, mm. a dream come true, right? Absolutely. 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 Yes. I mean, it's the, it's the top. You know, it makes or breaks people with the, this, you know, uh, hard schedule that we have. And also we get to sing in front of a 26-piece orchestra. Whenever do you get to do that? Mm -hmm. Never for yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> and then with the people you get to perform with, you actually got to perform with someone who's very special mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. Who would that be? Uh, my brother Jonathan Christopher <laughs> is also in the cast. Uh, and he's actually the one that told me I should audition for Sweeney Todd so that we could have the chance of possibly doing a show together. Wow. So Gina, the show has some crazy setups, ups and downs, hidden passway, passageways, parts of the show that the that are just mind-boggling. Mm -hmm. How do you prepare for all of this? How do you prepare for all of this? Um, I think there's a lot of letting go. I think if you think of the end of the show when you start it, mm -hmm. you'll almost have like a nervous breakdown. Yeah. You're like, <laughs> oh, you know, before you go to the gym, if you think of the last exercise, you're like, I'll yeah. never, we'll make, never it. make it. Yeah, so you just got to one scene at a time, one mm -hmm. moment at a time, and uh, and really feed off the energy that the other people on stage and that the audience gives you. You sure. know, they're, they're all sure. there. Wow. Have you? I mean, your character is very, ugh. <laughs> not big, not delicate. <laughs> Disturbing. Yeah. I'm a delicate flower. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, then, that being said, have you ever played a character remotely even close to what you're playing now? Um, I like to compare uh, the three hours of Sweeney Todd. It's almost like the last 20 minutes of Hamilton, because I played Aaron Burr in Hamilton. Yeah. And if you stretch that out right before the duel, right after the duel, if you stretch that out over three hours, that is basically what Sweeney Todd is to me. Ah, it's, uh, it's yeah. intense. It's intense. It is it's intense. Oh, intense. Hamilton. So yeah, that little show. I know, that little show. So how do both of you, how are you mindful of yourselves as, as performers, especially as theater performers? Because your whole body gets involved in this. What do you do when you're not on stage to protect yourselves but also give 110% mm -hmm. when you're out there? 
I mean, it's a lot more boring than you think. It's a lot of sleep. <laughs> it's a lot more sleep and soup than, yeah. than, than than they tell you. I mean, Nick has two babies under two. Yes, I have so, two baby girls at home, and so when you know, I have no choice but because when I have to get home, I'm either you know doing diapers or bottles or yeah. trying to give my wife a break. Um, yeah. So I whenever mean, I feel tired, I just think, okay, yeah, oh, he's doing it. I'm okay. Yeah, yeah exactly. Absolutely. Wow. But it is a workout, isn't yeah. it? I mean, it's definitely a workout. And... I mean, that's actually the thing in between. So um, I was the standby for Annalie for a year, mm -hmm. and the best training that I had was just, you know, good old boot camp with a trainer. Like, mm -hmm. there wasn't a better way to prepare than just physical fitness, just sort of staying up, and because uh, that's the thing that you can't pull together at the last minute, yeah. you know? You have to keep those things that are really like entrenched in your body up top so that at the last minute you can jump in the shower and warm up and eat right and sleep right, but those fitness things are what you really have to like maintain in right. the long term. Right, yeah. it always amazes me how you are able to maintain your voice mm. after so many shows. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, luckily I've, I've had a great uh, voice teacher um, and he's really helped me prepare to mm -hmm. sing correctly mm -hmm. and be able to, to, to to have the stamina yeah. to do uh, week after week after week, show after show right. after show. That's a yeah. lot. It yeah. is. It, it, you know, part of the theater experience, right? We're just casual observers, right? We just watch, we're there for the whole thing. Are you ever aware of what's happening in the audience oh, yes. or you're, are you totally dialed in? You for are. me, I feel like they're as much a part of the scene, mm -hmm. um, especially a comedy, right? Um, so we're definitely listening and, and uh, if they're slightly more reserved or they're bigger or, or the other day there was an actual interruption, you know? Yeah. But, oh, but yeah. it, uh, interruptions aside, the actual energy of them really does affect what's happening on stage mm -hmm. and how much you want to milk it or you want to pull it back or, you know, we're not doing, we're not even trying to do a TV performance where we do the same thing every day. We're trying to be live mm -hmm. artists and, and half the thing is listening to what the energy right. is coming back at you. So it's, we always uh, encourage people when you come to the show, really participate. <laughs> if you think something's funny, laugh. Yeah. If you want to clap, clap, cry, cry, because we're there for a shared experience together. Yeah. So I feel so nice. much better now because I tend to be the loud person. <laughs> yeah. We love loud like, people. Yes. We love that lady. Because yeah. <laughs> uh, you have something exciting coming up, right? Another show? Yes. So What's that? during the day, I'm tap dancing right now during the Get day. Get out. Um, in order to do Jelly's Last Jam at uh, oh my New York gosh. City Encore. Look at you. Yes. So it's oh uh, very gosh. exciting. Jelly's oh, there I am. That's oh, you. Oh, you. Oh, that's, oh, right. that's not Jonathan. That's yeah, you. That's a, so yeah. what is that? So for those that don't know, what is the show about? So the show is about Jelly Roll Morton, um, who is a jazz pianist uh, back at the turn of the 20th century, and he claims he invented jazz. Oh. Um, so it kind of takes, it, it begins on the day that he actually dies, and there's this uh, voodoo uh, character who, uh, called the Chimney Man, mm -hmm. who takes him back from the beginning of his life, and uh, almost like Scrooge and, yeah, yeah. And, the, and the ghosts of Christmas past, walks him all the way up through his life to present day so that wow. he can see how he wronged people, huh. see all the mistakes he made, and, and, and try to make him better in order to um, you know, transcend into the next life. That's a busy man, and you're a busy woman. <laughs> yes. yes. Talk to us about Broadway Weekends. Oh my gosh! Wow, they really. Yeah, yeah, um, so great. Broadway Weekends is a company that I've run for many years now, and our main thing is we run summer camps for adults, for amateur adults. So um, it's people, you know, all walks of life, accountants, lawyers, stay-at-home moms, you name it, we have, and we sort of uh, employ the artists from the current Broadway season. It's a real chance to sort of meet them and be integrated into uh, the summer camp they used to go to as kids, but, you know, with the, with the Broadway uh, echelon around you. And that it's, is uh, so cool. Yeah, we Very know. cool, and I'm glad that you said we even have accountants, because you know what? I can't imagine an actuary <laughs> yeah. being on Broadway. So, uh, next actuary you get that wants to be an actor, send them this way, because we want to talk to them. Okay. <laughs> okay, great. How can, they be, how can they find out about that? Broadway weekends, plural, and you will find it. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds We'd great. love to have you. Well, this was a real treat for us. Thank you both oh, so for much. For us, too. Thank Congratulations, you Congratulations, and yes. uh, continued success. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. You can see Nicholas Christopher and Gina DeWall performing on stage at the Lumpfontein Theater from now until February 8th. Grab your tickets while you can online at SweeneyToddBroadway.com.